Hey guys, this is Andrew and you're watching AF Swift Tutorials. In this video, I will be talking about Swift Lint and Swift Styling. And on practical example, I will show you how to install Swift Lint using Swift Package Manager. So briefly, what is Swift Lint and why Swift Styling is important? For instance, you start and work for a company or a startup and you want so all developers to be on the same page with the code styling so your code would be easier to read and understand by all team members that's why it's crucial to follow the the same code conventions and swift lint the, the tool that helps you to enforce that swift lint could be installed using cocopods mint homebrew or you can just drop files into your project and also using SPM. And SPM install is a little bit trickier, that's why I want to show you how to do that today. As you can see, here I have a simple file with some protocols and structures that have uh, a little bit broken styling, too much vertical vice spacing, no spacing around the arrow, different spacing around semicolons like here and there. and if you try to build this code, it builds successfully, throwing no errors, because Swift compiler doesn't check the styling. Therefore, in order to apply the unified styling, we need to add a Swift lint. So in order to add Swift lint, let's go to the project, switch to from target to project, then package dependencies and hit plus. I have SwiftLint under recently used. If you don't have it, you can easily Google it and paste the link here into search. And for dependency rule, I'd like to set exact version and hit add package. And this is a very important step because it wants to add a library to the target. And we don't want to do that because it's going to conflict with our build and iOS build is gonna fail in this case because SwiftLint is, could be run by Mac or Linux but could not be run by iOS. That's why we wanted to change target to none for both library and executable and hit add package. So we have our packages result. Next step is to add linting file, which is actually the rules that is going to be used by SwiftLint to check our files and throw the warnings if uh, those files have bad styling. So let's switch to Finder and inside of Downloads I have a YML file and you cannot see that because it's hidden, it has a dot before its name. In order to show hidden files, simply press shift command dot. And as you can see, here is our file. We can open it using Xcode. And this is, those are actually the rules that are gonna be used by SwiftLint. This file is kind of aggressive. It's gonna be throwing a lot of errors. So you can use, uh, use this file or you can modify it. You can use some either you can use some other style guide. There are different files with the different settings. So you can explore it and adjust to your needs. So again, we want to, about YML file, we want to drop our YML file to the root of project. For me, it's SwiftLint demo and I will just drop to the root and now we can close the finder and go to the next step. Now we have YML file, which is which are our rules for linting. Now we need to add a build phase, which is the script that is going to run the Swift lint. Let's switch to target and switch to build phases. Hit plus and add new run script phase. And under run script, we're gonna paste our script for opening SwiftLint. 
we also wanted to uncheck based on dependency analysis and show environment variables in build log, then gonna suppress some errors that are gonna be thrown by SwiftLint. And this is almost the last step. The one last thing we wanna do is to disable script sandboxing because new Xcodes by default and the one last step is to disable script sandboxing because latest Xcode versions disabled sandboxing and do not allow scripts uh, to run files from other destination. So if you're gonna throw an error, that path is forbidden. You cannot run the file of SwiftLint. Therefore, we need to switch to build settings. And also here you can uh, have selected basic so you wanna to show all settings and in filter you can just type sandbox and under build options user script sandboxing you have yes so you wanna switch it to no and now let's switch back to our file and try to build our project and as you can see, it throws a bunch of errors, which means that our uh, SwiftLint works correctly. So now let's briefly go through those errors and try to fix them. First of all, we have colon space in violation, which should be like this. There should be no space from the left and one space from the right. Another, we have bad space in here because SwiftLint imposes four spaces for identification and here we have only two and we can easily switch that using control i which automatically fixes that if you have four spaces set in your xcode if you don't know what you have actually set hit comment comma and go to text editing and here indent wrapped lines by four spaces. Select it, you can switch to two. Uh, I like to have it uh, by default four spaces. Next, uh, vertical white spaces. There should be no more than two white spaces. So go on only one. Here we have white spaces around the error. Should be spaced from the left and from the right. Let's try to build it again. And we have error implicitly unwrapped. We don't really need the implicit unwrapping. We can use just string and also add space around the get. Delete it here as well. Try to build. No errors inside protocol. So now let's fix the structure. and hit build and our build is succeeded. And as you can see now with applied SwiftLint rules, our file looks cleaner and easier to read and maintain. So this is it. That's how you install SwiftLint using Swift Package Manager. If you find this video useful, give it a like, consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.